can't comment on Facebook. Uh, it's a very different kind of company. But I think, you know, it's definitely the case that the rules that have stood us in good stead for the last 20 years of innovation in the world of the Internet could never have conceived of some of the things which we enjoy every day, having the whole Internet in the palm of your hand, in your handbag or in your pocket. This, this is something which we would never have envisaged. So we really agree that it's time to update the rules of the road. And particularly in Europe with the Digital Services Act, Digital Market Act, uh, where the drafts are about to be published, there's an opportunity to ensure that we don't just restrict what's allowed, but we also enable what's possible to benefit citizens from the latest advances in technology. On, on that front, let's turn to the Digital Services Act. It's a huge initiative for Ursula von der Leyen's commission. And to your point, it is Europe's way to try to prepare the continent for the future and what life will look like in this new digital age. Where do you think the onus of responsibility lies when it comes to a regulating content that appears on platforms like yours? Well, I think, um, you know, we have a responsibility. Uh, probably the most relevant part of what we do is, is YouTube here, where it's user generated content that's uploaded 500 hours of video every day. And of course, we have responsibilities today. Some of them are legal responsibilities to comply with the law. Some of them we've actually developed in conjunction with policymakers like the EU codes of contact on, on hate speech and misinformation to try to ensure that we define standards that we can then adhere to in terms of removing content. And we've built technology, uh, which we share with the industry, actually, so that if harmful content is identified, it can be removed uh, often without a single human view and others can see that content and remove it as well. So these are all kind of relatively new challenges that have emerged over the last uh, 10 years. And we've uh, a track record of engaging with policymakers, particularly in Europe, actually, to try to ensure that we continue to have the benefit of these amazing platforms, many of which have been an absolute lifeline to people in, in the lockdown. We need to make sure that they're acting responsibly and we don't wait for the law. We try to ensure that we're always at the forefront of ensuring that our platforms are safe for people. Right, Matt, but to pick up on that as well, um, I actually spoke to the European Competition Commissioner, uh, Margaret Vestager, last week, and she talked about the new rules and she said the purpose of them was not just to create a safe, uh, safe environment online, but also for companies like your own to be more transparent. And when we talk about transparency here, we're talking about how search results come up, how products are recommended, uh, the type of uh, ranking that comes up when uh, people go into your Google search box. My question to you is, if you actually comply with these rules, are you giving up too much propriety con content? Are you, are you essentially giving up the crown jewels? Well, it's a great question. And, and of course, we haven't seen the detail of the rules. And, and we've always said it's getting the details right that are important. Um, you, but if you ask about search and search results, you know, I'd say that today you can judge our search results by doing the searches. You know, they're completely transparent. You can see the order we rank every result in. And of course, you know, some companies uh, who are commercial may want to be at the top of the list and feel that, you know, it should be them rather than somebody else. There's always going to be a different point of view. But you're absolutely right. One of the reasons that search is so valuable to users is that we try to give you the most relevant and useful results, not to preference any particular organization. And, you know, there's a risk that if we make exactly how we do that completely transparent, then it becomes useless because people are able to game the system. And, then, and that's really one of the areas of detail we need to get right. We absolutely should be held accountable for standards and policies. And we try to be more and more transparent um, with policymakers. We publish transparency reports, for example, about how many requests we have from governments uh, to provide information on users or to adjust results. And we, we explain, you know, in quite a lot of detail now, uh, how we deal with those requests. So we think there's a way forward here, which gets the detail right, which preserves the kind of technology that we've become really used to, put used to uh, and rely on day to day to make decisions, uh, to find medical information, to find businesses. We want to make sure that that innovation uh, continues, but that people are well protected. 